What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at Socket.io rooms. So I think instead of me kind of giving you a long-winded introduction and you kind of getting bored about what rooms are within Socket.io, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you what it is that we are going to be building together. And then based on that, I think you're going to get a pretty good idea about what rooms might be and what we might potentially be able to do with it down the line. So let's take a look at the project that we're going to be building together. So as you can see here, I'm navigated over to localhost 3000. And the first thing I'm being met with is going to be this sort of form that's going to ask me for a username. So I'm going to go ahead and say that my name is Chaim, hit connect. And as you can see, what I joined now is something that looks a lot like sort of, sort of a chat application, right? So you'll see here on the left hand side, we've got these channels and then we've also got all the users and and it currently it says that only I am connected. So let's open up another tab. Let's go uh, to localhost 3000. And then in this tab, we're gonna go ahead and say that Jack is connecting. Well, now, as you can see in Jack's tab, we see that um, the U is next to the word, next to the name Jack. And we also see that we have Chaim connected. Coming back to the first tab, we see that we have Chaim as well as Jack. So we now have two users connected. Both of these users also have the same sort of list of channels. That's going to be general, random jokes, and of course, JavaScript. By default, both users are already joined into the actual general chat. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Let's go ahead and say, hey. So now in Jack's tab, we went ahead in the general channel, we wrote the word, hey. Come back to Chaim's tab, and as you can see, he's currently in the general chat, and you can see that he also has the words, hey. Now let's go and have um, Chaim join the actual uh, random channel. So now as you can see, he's not currently joined, so he has to go ahead and hit, press the join button. As he does that, now he's currently in the channel, it says, hey, or hi. But now, if you come back to this tab, Right as it is right now, since Jack isn't currently in that channel, he doesn't actually have that message yet. So, and you can see this because when Jack, when Jack comes to the random chat, he has to first join and he won't have this message. Now, typically in a lot of instances, what's going to happen is if you have joined a, me a channel after a message has already been sent, you're not going to sort of get the previous messages. You're only going to get to what's sort of been uh, sent from now on. But Slack, of course, doesn't work this way. And a lot of sort of more sophisticated chat applications don't work this way. You, of course, want to make sure that if somebody joins a channel late, they can still kind of see the history of what's been said within that particular chat. And so that's exactly what happens here. If now Jack goes ahead and joins the channel, you can see he's still going to be getting the messages that has been previously sent. Something else that we can, of course, do is we can, of course, do um, direct messages. So now we're going to be in Jack's tab. So Jack will now go ahead and choose Chaim as the person he wants to send the message to. And he can just go ahead and say, hey, Chaim. And now Chaim can go to actually Jack and see that he has actually gotten a message from Jack. Because of course, Jack is the one who sent him this message. So he has to actually choose Jack as the chat for right now. And then when he actually does that, he can now see that Jack has in fact sent him a message. So we actually have the ability to sort of have channel chat as well as direct messaging chat. And to kind of sort of take this channel chat a step further, let's just kind of illustrate the fact that it's sort of a group chat because now if I have a, per a third person join, let's say Jill is joining now. And so now Jill is also in the general chat by default. So now she can go and say, hey, Paul. And then when she comes, and then when Jack will let's say go to chat with, to, to a general, he actually has the message from um, Jill. And then when Chaim goes back to general, he too also has the message from Jill. So as you can see, we kind of have this idea that we have sort of channels that are sort of group chat that everyone that's within that particular channel will get that message. But someone who's not in the channel will of course not that get that message. And in addition to that, we also actually have the concept of one-on-one -on -one chats. And all of this is being afforded to us by something called Socket.io Rooms. So with that introduction out of the way, let's actually get the coding. Okay, so the plan is for us to actually build the backend portion of this particular project in this week's video, and then to go ahead and build out the client side portion of this application in next week's video. So if you're not subscribed, now's a good time to make sure that you are subscribed so you don't actually miss the follow-up to this very cool video. So let's get into it. Okay, so if you'd like to follow along, you can find the starter files down in the description box below. What you'll find is basically just some sort of boilerplate code. Um, you'll see that we have the client folder, which is just a React application that's been bootstrapped using Create React App. And you'll also notice that we um, have in our server-side package JSON, we already have Express and Sakadeo both installed. So for now, the only place that we are going to be spending our time writing code is going to be within the server.js file. And then our next week's uh, video, we're going to start spending most of our time within the actual client folder. So let's actually get into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually going to go ahead and require the Express module, which we've installed. I'm then going to require the HTTP module, which is a built-in module that exists within the Node ecosystem. We're then going to go ahead and create an app object from the Express function call. We're then going to go ahead and create a server object by calling the HTTP.createServer function, passing in the app which we received from the Express function call. Then let's go ahead and import socket from socket.io. Then finally, we're going to go ahead and create an IO instance by calling the socket function, passing in our server that we've created by passing in our app object that we've gotten from Express. And that's kind of how this, we sort of link Express together with socket.io. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do 
is we're simply going to say server.listen on port 1337. And then when we actually start up the server and the server is in fact starting to listen on that very port, we're going to have a simple console log that's going to lock to the terminal saying that we are in fact running on the port that is specified, which in this case is of course 1337. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do basically here is we're going to say IO that on connection. So we're going to take this IO object that we've created right up over here. We're going to use this on method, which is basically a listener for particular events. And the first event that we're going to be listening out for is going to be this sort of connection event. So the connection event is one of those sort of built-in reserved keywords within Socket.io that whenever you want to listen out for a new connection, whenever a new socket is going to go ahead and connect to our server, you can then use the connection event. And then what's going to end up happening is the callback to that event is going to is actually going to give you a newly generated socket. And you can sort of think of this socket as sort of representing this new person that has just joined our server. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up an event listener for the actual join server. So we're going to take this newly generated socket that was been given to us by the on connection event. Now this socket, of course, represents this person. So now we're going to say that on this particular socket, we can start setting up multiple different event listeners. So the first event listener that we want to listen out for that's going to be something that's going to be sent to us from this client set code is going to be the join server event. So the join server event is going to be a function, is going to accept a callback, which is going to accept the username as an argument. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of build up this user object. And then we're going to say users.push this user. So of course, we don't yet have this user's collection. So let's just go ahead and, and set that up really quickly. We're just going to go ahead and say let users. And I'm purposely using let and not const, and we'll soon see why that is. But for now, all we're really doing is we're saying that we're going to take this username, build up this username object, this user object with the username, and then the ID of the socket that ID. So of course, every newly generated socket that we get from Socket.io has a distinct ID that represents just that particular socket. And that kind of helps us to sort of differentiate between different people, and they're represented by their socket ID. And then finally, we're going to say io.emit. That's another event that we actually get from the actual io object. We're going to say emit new user, and then we're going to take the sort of users array and then just send it off to the client with all of those particular users. Now, the reason why we're particularly saying io.emit as opposed to socket.emit, because the actual socket event object also has the ability to sort of emit events, because here, what we're trying to do is we're basically trying to tell every single connected client, including myself, every single connected client in our server, I want you to be aware a new person has joined. And the reason why this is important, because we kind of want to have this sort of uh, left hand side, that we've just seen that says that has a list of all the connected users and the way that we do that is we take this entire array and we just sort of broadcast it to everybody that's currently connected to our server hey here is the list of users that are currently connected to our server all right so the next event that we're going to be listening out for is going to be the sort of join room event now this is where we actually start to kind of get into the focus of this particular video and of course next week's videos as well is going to be the whole concept of rooms and as it turns out this whole sort of big idea is really really a very small simple api that sakadeo offers which is one of the really neat things about it because the concept is quite big. You have different rooms, and only if you particularly join the room, then you kind of see the messages. Someone who's in a different room won't see the message that's been sent to this room. So somebody who's in random won't see the message that have been joined the channel in, in general, unless they're actually also in that in that chat as well. And then the ability to sort of join rooms, and it's kind of like a lot of logic that Sakadeo has to kind of keep track of. But what's really neat about this is, for our purposes, all it takes is just this one line over here socket that join and that's it and then you just pass in some arbitrary string which is of course going to be the room name so in this case when we actually are going to be emitting the socket that or the join room event from the client set code we are going to actually pass in a room name and they're also going to be passing in a callback and i'll talk about that, that in just a second but for now the main concept that i kind of want to highlight is the fact that we're going to be passing in a room name and then socket that join room name is all it takes to actually make a socket live in a particular room and then whenever a message is sent to that particular room this particular socket will actually be broadcast or be made aware that a message has been sent to that channel and all it takes is simply saying socket that joined room name. That's it. Now, um, be, let's forget about the messages of room name for just a second. That's another thing I kind of want to talk about momentarily. But one of the things I want to highlight now is the fact that we're actually also accepting a callback as an argument here when we're actually going to be emitting the join room event. And this is actually very cool because basically a lot of times what ends up happening is when somebody joins or somebody emits in a particular event, what you want to do is you want to actually go ahead and send back a message to just that particular user that has just emitted that event. So now in this particular case, what we're trying to do is we're basically saying that let's say a message has already been sent in the random chat. So you hadn't yet joined the random channel yet. And then some some conversation has already been happening within that random channel before you joined. Now, when you actually go and you join that random channel, Channel, you want to sort of retroactively now go and get all the sort of previous messages that have already been sent within this channel before you've joined. Now, the way that we're doing is we're going to be having the sort of messages object, which I, of course, I have not yet created. I'm going to be creating that in just a second. But the way that we're, do we're going to be doing that is we're going to, you know, just kind of give you the messages of the room name by calling this callback function. Now, the sort of more typical way that this is typically done is you might do something along the lines of like socket.emit, right? You might come up with some kind of uh, event name. So we're saying that, you know, We've joined the room, so let's just go ahead and say joined, I guess. And then what we could do is we can then go ahead and say messages 
of room name, right? And so now this, of course, works because now what's done happening is we're only going to be emitting an event to the very same socket that actually called this join room event in the first place. So pretty much if I had just joined the room, only I myself are going to be getting this sort of joined event in return. The problem with this is, is the fact that now in my server set code, I have to come up with a new event name. And then in my client set code, I now have to go ahead and set up a new event listener for this particular callback. So there's just kind of more ceremony, sort of more code that needs to be written. And it works, but I don't love it. And so recently, I was actually looking through some code um, regarding Sakadeo on GitHub, and I actually found a really cool pattern that that other person was doing, and I decided I'm going to adopt it whenever it makes sense. And this is exactly this scenario when it actually makes sense. Basically, what he did was, is he actually passed along a callback from the client side code to the server side code, which the server side code can then go ahead and call. And so that's exactly what we're doing right over here. Basically, when the client side code is actually gonna go ahead and emit the join room event, besides for only passing along the room name, it's also gonna go ahead and pass along an actual callback function. And now the server side code can literally actually go ahead and invoke that callback. And to me, this is just a very cool concept because now what's actually really happening is your server side code is literally invoking a function that was the fine client side. So besides the fact that that's just super cool, which I think is very cool, I think you'll agree with me, it's also kind of neat because now there's no need for me to sort of, you know, uh, specify new event names and also specify new event handlers. I can just literally have the join room event that's being listened out for on the server, being emitted from the client, and then we just have the sort of callback going back and forth. And so now when you call join room, I'm gonna go ahead and invoke this callback function, and to that callback function, I'm gonna be passing those messages, and now you and the client set code have to find this callback, you do with it whatever you want. It's entirely up to you. I just know that when you're gonna be joining a new room name, or a new room, you're gonna give me a callback. To that callback, I'm gonna pass you the messages. You do with it whatever you want. And I kind of like this uh, sort of method a lot. Since we now actually have these messages here, let's actually go ahead and find this collection and see what it actually looks like. Okay, so as you can see here, basically messages is really nothing more than just an object that has the sort of four keys, general, random, jokes, and JavaScript. And they're basically just arrays, and these arrays are going to be holding these sort of message objects. And so again, the reason why this is important is because when somebody sort of joins a channel late, we wanna make sure that we can sort of, re sort of retroactively show them all the messages that have already been sent within this particular chat. Okay, so here we are defining the actual send message event listener. So basically, whenever somebody sends a message in the client side, they're going to be emitting an event to the server that's gonna be send message. And now the, what we're gonna be passing along is going to be the actual, an object that's going to contain the content of the message, two, which will be either a chat name or an individual socket ID, as we're soon gonna see, the sender of who's actually currently sending the message, the chat name, which is going to be relevant only in certain instances, and then of course the actual uh, Boolean of whether or not it's going to in fact be a channel, because that will depend on some of the logic of how we're gonna be handling this. So what's gonna happen here is like this. If we are in fact a channel, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be building up this payload object, and the payload is going to be including the content of the message, the chat name, whether it's going to be you know general, random jokes, or JavaScript, and then of course, who's the one that's been currently sending them this message. So this is actually very straightforward. Now here, this is also the part of the sort of Socket.io API that makes it very easy to work with rooms, because all we're now doing is we're basically saying socket.to. So we're calling on this individual socket that's trying to send the message, and we're saying to, and then to is a function that you can kind of pass in either a room name or a socket ID, and then you're going to be sending the message message only to either that room or to that socket ID, depending on what you're passing in. So in the case of when it is a channel, the assumption is going to be that the two variable that we are passing along is going to be a chat name. And so then basically what happens is anyone who joined a particular room, if the channel or the message is being sent to that particular room, if they're in it, they're going to go ahead and see this message. So this is the sort of other part of the Socket.io API that makes dealing with rooms very, very easy. Because again, what's happening is you join a room and then simply saying socket that two passing the name of that room they're trying to send it to, that's all it takes to kind of make sure that only those people that are in within that particular room are the ones that are going to be getting that particular message. And then of course, we're gonna call emit, passing along the um, new message event, and they're gonna take this payload and then they just go ahead and pass it off to the client set code, which is then going to go ahead and handle whatever the client set code wants to handle with this particular payload. Now, here's where things are slightly more tricky, but also still very straightforward, is what happens when it's not a channel? What happens when we are in fact trying to send a DM to one individual person? So here, as you can see, the code looks almost entirely the same. So once again, we're building up this payload object, and over here we're saying socket that two. And so in this case, a two, of course, will not be representing a channel name, rather it's going to be representing a actual socket ID. And that is something that the sort of client set code is going to handle. The client set code is going to know if I'm sending a chat or to a to a channel, make sure that you're sending along the chat name, otherwise send me the actual socket ID. And then of course, it's all the same, we're just gonna go ahead and say emit new message with the actual payload. Now the one thing that is going to be different is you're gonna see here, I'm actually saying that the chat name is equal to the sender, whereas over here, I basically just said chat name is equal to chat name, and that's it, the chat name is not the sender. So let's actually think about why it is that I did that. If let's say both Jack and Jill are joining general, 
Well, the general channel is named general for both Jack and Jill. So if they want to actually go ahead and see messages that exist for them within the sort of general chat, they can both just choose the general chat because it's named the same for both of them. Both Jack and Jill have the same channel name when it comes to the name general or, or random or jokes or whatever. In other words, so long as it's a channel, a channel's name is the same for every single user regardless of who they are. But the same cannot be said about a one-on-one -on -one chat. For example, if let's say Jack messages Jill, well, now as far as Jill's concerned, she has not received a message from Jack. So she has to actually click on Jack's name to see any messages that were sent to her from Jack. And the same thing is true with vice versa. If let's say Jill sends a Jack a message, in order for Jack to go ahead and see that message, he has to click on, J on, the, on the sort of chat name called Jill because he's going to have a sort of list of users. He's going to have to click on Jill's name to kind of see any messages that he has going back and forth with her. So that's the kind of basic idea. The actual chat name here is always going to be the sender because if you're sending me a message, then your then, then your name will be my sort of chat name. For me to be able to see the messages, I'm gonna to have to click on your name because that's gonna sort of be the chat name for me. And so again, the idea basically is when it comes to, chat, to channels, the chat name is the same for everybody, but when it comes to DMs or direct messaging, the actual chat name is going to be the person who's sending you that message, which is why over here, we're basically saying that the chat name is in fact equal to the sender. And then finally, the last thing that we're doing here in the sort of send message event is you're basically saying that um, we're gonna go ahead and dig into our messages object right over here. Um, we're of course going to make sure that this particular chat name does in fact exist within our messages object because we don't want to be indexing it to something that is undefined. And then we're going to say messages of chat name that push. We're going to go ahead and push on this object. And again, the reason why we're doing this is because if somebody kind of joins the chat late, they can still sort of retroactively go back and kind of get all the messages that have been sent before they've actually gotten the chance to join this channel. Okay, and finally, the last thing that we're going to be doing here in the server side code is we're going to be setting up an event listener on the disconnect event. And then all we're going to be doing is we're going to be filtering out the user that is currently leaving from the user's array. And then once again, we're going to say IO then emit new user, even though technically it doesn't really make sense to say new user, but that is just kind of the event that the client side code is listening out for. Basically, there's an event that says new user on the client side code that the, that the client side code will be listening out for that kind of takes the entire user array. And this is how the client side code knows how to sort of render the list of connected users in the left sidebar. And so basically, what's going to be happening is now we're going to be pretty much filtering out all of the users from within the users array. And then we're once again going to go ahead and emit that event with the new users array, which is now going to be all the people minus the person that has just left. And that's of course going to then be able to be reflected within the client side code. So if Jack, John, and Jill were all within the actual chat, if Jill now left, we're only going to go ahead and see Jack and John. Well, that does it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week in another video. And that week's video is going to be the sort of follow-up to this one, where we're going to start building out the client side code for this video. So make sure you actually subscribe so you don't miss that video. Thank you.